The highly anticipated Arla Elite Series Japanese Tour would kick off with the uh, Motegi 404 presented by the Otsuba Insurance Corporation. Libby Bell is on the pole. Kevin Monroe on the outside of the front row got a poor start. And that is debutant driver Maro Odachi pushing Bell to an early lead. During the first eight laps, all eyes were on Rachel Rainsford. She started last after crashing and qualifying, but she charged all the way into the lead. Her backup car is clearly better than her primary. Hideo Suzuka gets turned around by Greg Woodard, and that will bring out the first caution of the day here on lap number 9. Suzuka owns a couple of cars in Dash Cup, and he is making his Arla Elite Series debut today. Kevin Monroe blows up under this caution period. Monroe is having one of his worst seasons ever in terms of finishing races, and this is not going to make it any better. Kiki Hitsuno leads on the restart, Hitsuno will be running the Japanese Tour with Hibiki Sport, her former team from her uh, Pacific Racing Championship days. Points leader Taylor Brillen uh, gets up to the front of the field and leads a few laps. She's coming off of a couple of bad races where she failed to make it to the finish. Ryu Akazaro in his first start of the year blows up coming off of turn two. Uh, Kota Fujimoto in car 83 gets collected as well. And here is Lev Azarov running into the back of Greg Woodard under caution and setting off a small pile up. Azarov was already busted earlier in the season for crashing into people under caution. So we'll just have to see what becomes of this little incident. In the meantime, Shoko Hirayama leads on the restart. She is one of uh, Kiki Itsuno's teammates over at Hibiki Sport, the other being Kota Fujimoto. Here is 2009 Series Champion Akira Sukari almost taking out her teammate Jason Bates in her return to the Arla Elite Series presented by Smash Beer. Fujimoto and Namimura are in, on their way into the pits. F Fujimoto smashes into the end of the pit wall and goes flying after bouncing back in front of Lev Azarov. Fujimoto walked away from this wreck, but that car is quite obviously done. Reed Bullet, uh, shortly after the restart, smashes into the pit wall himself. Bullet was making a series debut for Power Steering Incorporated, and he's been a nuisance all day. In, under caution, Kai Arakaki smashes into the back of Radomir Stanichev and collects Jason Bates and Hannah Percy. Arakaki, making his first start in the series, was ordered to meet with Race Control. He will be joining Lev Azarov. Shoko Hirayama uh, leads on the restart once again, and she's got quite a few cars on the tail end of the lead lap in front of her as uh, this latest wreck occurred in the middle of the pit cycle. With just a few laps remaining, AJ Young in car 15 has got a problem, which apparently prevented him from making it into the pit lane. This is just getting silly. However, this is going to force a green-white checkered, and it would be the Hibiki teammates on the front row. Kiki Itsuno leads, but Shoka Hiriyama pushes ahead, coming to the line. We've got only eight cars on this restart, all duking it out for the win. Hiriyama leads, going into the first corner. Uh, she tries to pull in front of Hitsuno, but Hitsuno is able to drive it in much deeper than the 93. These two were teammates when they raced together in the Pacific Racing Championship, and now they drag race down the backstretch, but here comes Rick Tyler making it three wide for the lead. Tyler is going for his second consecutive win. Hiriyama starts to fall back a bit, but here comes Bixby Foot on the inside going into turn one. We're on the final lap now. Foot assumes the lead of the race, but here comes Maro Adachi into second place. Adachi is now hooked up with Taylor Brillen, and now they've got a big run down the backstretch into turn number three. Adachi trying to win in his first start, but they all crash. Adachi, Foot, and Tyler all hard into the wall. There's another rack up ahead. And that all started when Taylor Brillen got into the back of the 96 going into turn three. Brillen came across the line to take the checkered flag first. And you can see that she just didn't lift going into the first corner. This incident would be um, under review for quite some time. And then it was finally decided that Brillen would be stripped of the victory, handing the win over to Akira Sukari, who came across the line in second. Brillen, with her over-aggressive move, was moved down to 8th place the tail end of the lead lap and slapped with an additional 25-point penalty. And that's going to cost her the points lead going into uh, the Arla Hokkaido Grand Prix, where she won the pole. Brillen is trying to repair her reputation as she leads the field into the first corner here at this uh, very short Hokkaido Speed Park. But we've already got trouble. Hideo Suzuka gets turned into... Uh, the uh, hay bale going into turn number one and Kiki Itsuno the hometown hero gets uh, smashed into the wall 
after contact with the 116 of Ryan Matthews. Rick Tyler, the new points leader, has wrestled the lead away from Taylor Brillen, coming back to the yellow flag. However, the defending series champion blows up. Under caution, he brings the smoking 16 car into the pit lane. Brillen is going to get the lead back, and she'll try to make up some lost ground. Jason Bates and Bates Foot chase after her on the restart. And Jason Bates would come to life. He almost turns Taylor Brillen around coming off of uh, turn number three. Bates would hound the 64 for quite a while. Now on lap number 15, Bates gets a run heading into the chicane. And he sticks with the 64. Brillen runs off the road, giving Bates a clear shot at the lead of the race. Bates Foot now coming after car 64 as Bates tries to get away. Jason Bates has never won a race in the Arley Elite Series presented by Smash Beer, but he's clearly got the fastest car of the day. However, he's facing some problems with uh, lap traffic not getting out of the way. That is Radimir Standichev in car 28 struggling to not go a lap down, and that brings Taylor Brillen, car 64, right back into the battle. But Brillen now gets swept up in the lap traffic, and she runs off the road and into the wall. Brillen goes out of the race from second, and her Japanese tour continues to fall apart. Jason Bates, in the meantime, has just taken the white flag with a big lead over Eric Jackson in car seven. Bates competed in his first Arla race shortly after his 20th birthday. He is now 31 and has never won a race, but he's been so close so many times. But his sponsor, Carl Superstores, has had faith in him all these long years, and that faith will be rewarded as Jason Bates finally takes home his first Arla Elite Series victory. Congratulations to Jason Bates and the Carl Superstores crew. They were unstoppable all day, and they certainly deserved this win. Only eight cars finished on the lead lap. Radomir Standichev and Ryan Matthews both fell a lap down, but still finished in the top ten. Ryan Matthews, in fact, led a lap during the uh, green flag pit cycle. The number 51 crew had quite the wild celebration in victory lane, but we've still got round two to get through. Here at the Hokkaido Speed Park, Hannah Percy, another, another one of the Dash Cup regulars, it was on the pole, and she takes off. Uh, heading into the first corner, uh, Libby Bell, car 24, chases after her. Kevin Monroe and Nami Mura, car 39, fight for third. Scott Dalitz goes off the road and washes back up into Akira Sakari and Jessica Graham. This brings out the caution on the first lap of the race, and coming back to the caution, Belmir Yankovic gets tagged from behind by Ryo Akazaru and goes into the wall. Reed Bullet making his second start for Power Steering Incorporated. Well, it was just as slow as he was at uh, Twin Ring Bategi and he almost takes out his teammate Libby Bell. I am not too sure what Power Steering Incorporated sees in this guy as Rachel Rainsford uh, takes out the 11 car but Bullet bounces back into Rainsford and sends her for a slide. Kevin Monroe's miserable Japanese tour continues as he uh, cuts down a tire on the restart, brings it into the pits, but he overshoots his pit stall and stalls the car out. At the same time, here is uh, Jessica Graham as she makes contact with the O2 of Cassandra Collins and spins right in front of Scott Dalitz. Dalitz then pushes her off the track and into the hay bales. On the next restart, Dalitz gets into the back of the 59. Uh, Collins and Bullet are then sent spinning. Graham's 59 car is heavily damaged after being a pinball on these last two restarts. Scott Dalitz on the next restart then gets turned around by uh, Cassie Collins in the 02. It's been quite chaotic here in the back of the field to say the least. And coming back to this caution, uh, Kota Fujimoto gets shoved off the road by Leslie Riggs. Fujimoto's tenure in his home country has been quite miserable. But at the business end of the field, Hannah Percy has been dominant this whole race and she comes off the final corner to take her first Arla Elite Series victory in just her second start leading all 40 laps from the pole. Percy with the Ben Atkins own team puts on a perfect performance to give us our second first time winner of the day. Shoko Hiriyama for Hibiki Sport collects her second top five in her second start and grabs the high climber bonus doing so she started all the way back in 15. Kai Arakaki and Ryo Akazaro bounce back from horrific Motegi races to finish in the top 10. We now head off to the Suzuka circuit for the Izumi Engines Grand Prix. Kevin Monroe is on the pole 
looking to have a good race for once. Nami Miura chases after him, heading through the first set of corners, but Bixby Foot challenges her. However, Foot's going to get turned around by Akira Sukari, and Foot's day is going to be done after just two corners. Libby Bell blows up and then gets turned around by Seiji Daiho, another one of the Kurt Walker cars. Uh, Kai Arakaki is involved and we've got a huge stack up as Jessica Graham gets uh, pelted by several cars as she tries to get back going. Here on lap number four, Sukari challenges Monroe for the lead. Sukari won the Elite Series Championship in 2009, becoming the first woman to do so. She hadn't been in an Arla car since then, but she jumped right back in and now she's already got a win in her return. AJ Young misses the pit lane, bounces off the wall and into the tire barrier off of the final corner. AJ Young's Japanese tour has not gone very well. Vilmir Yankovic's got an interesting pit strategy going on. Apparently he is, his objective is to grab himself some TV time and he's doing that running second to Akira Sukari before he has to pit. Taylor Brillen has a mechanical problem and spends a very long time in the pit lane Brillin's season has been falling apart ever since we got into Japan, but Rip Tyler, uh, the points leader, is loving it as he uh, runs around in fourth place. Akira Sukari is long gone uh, as we get towards the end of this race, so the battle is now for second, uh, which Kiki Hitsuno now occupies, but Kevin Monroe is clearly faster than the four car. However, Hitsuno is doing a hell of a job holding him off. And coming off the final corner, Akira Sukari takes her second win of the year, making it uh, three for four for Kurt Walker Motorsports. And about 20 seconds back, Hitsuno is going to be able to hold off Monroe, who uh, finally has something go right for him. So Monroe's going to be happy about this result either way. You cannot argue that Akira Sukari can still get the job done in this series. And it's going to be all smiles over at Kurt Walker Motorsports as they have won three of the four Japanese rounds. And there you see in fifth place, Aoi Tanazaka, the owner of Aztec Autosport, uh, outperforming her driver Jessica Graham for the second year in a row. We will bring you the point standings after the conclusion of the American portion of the Ring of Fire Tour. Stay tuned.